Good day, everyone. My name is Favor, and I'm also 17 years old. And I'm going to be talking about ending gender-based violence in Nigeria. First, what is gender-based violence? Gender-based violence is a form of violence where a gender, male or female, uses power or force to cause pain or injury to other gender, male or female, causing mental or physical pain to the victim. But why, do we, why exactly do we call this gender-based violence? It is called gender-based violence because it oftentimes involves two sex, where one sex is taking advantage of the other sex, thereby causing pain. And there are various forms of gender-based violence. We have the sexual violence, the physical violence, the domestic violence, harmful traditional practices, economic violence. On that sexual violence, we have rape, defilement. Rape is when someone is being forced to have sex. But defilement is similar to rape but slightly different because it involves a victim who is less than 18. Sexual assault and sexual harassment. I bet you that one out of five girls sitting down here today has been sexually harassed in one way or the other. Sexual harassment is the sec unwanted sexual advancement advances towards a person. There's physical violence. We have the beating. This is the most common violence and the least reported. We all know that beating is a form of discipline once in a while. But I bet you that when that beating becomes excessive, it's no longer discipline. It's an abuse. We have the indecent assault, battery, kidnap, and trafficking. Kidnap is when a person is being abducted and held captive against their own will. While trafficking is when a person is being adopted and traded for illegal acts, such as commercial sex workers, forced labor. We have the domestic violence, which is the psychological and emotional abuse. Most times when we talk about domestic violence, we oftentimes link it to physical. But I want to prove that fact wrong today and say that there's also emotional abuse. We all know that we get angry once in a while, we scold a child, we yell at them. But when you use degrading and belittling language that makes that child demoralized and start doubting himself, that is no longer being angry or just yelling. It's an abuse. We have maltreatment, starvation. This is when a child is being denied of food. And we know that we need that to survive, right? I mean, food is the basic thing we need. We have neglect abandonment, and separation from parents. Harmful traditional practices. We have child marriage. I don't really think there's anything we have to talk about without adding this child marriage because it's really, really, really something we should abolish. This is when a child is being married off before the age of 18. And for the girls, they are forced to become wives and mothers. At that early stage in life, where all they should be thinking of is how to pass their papers. And you check the statistic and you see that most of these girls married off before the age of 18 are victims of domestic violence because they are very vulnerable. We have the female gender mutilation. This is the circumcision of female organs with the stupid and barbaric belief that it helps them ensure their chastity. We have the widowhood practices. Of course, Nollywood have thrown a lot of light in that. You've seen in the um, movies where the husband of, dies and then the wife is forced to shave her hair and that of the girl child in, in the act of mourning the man. In some weird cases, they even wash the dead body of the man and feed it to the wife. In some cases where they think the woman is, the woman has a hand in killing her husband. And some of them even goes as far as denying the wife and the children the inheritance of the man. We have economic violence, poverty, no maintenance, no necessaries. Like she said, imagine a family that has about 360 naira for that day. 
And for the girls, we, know, we all know that there's that time of the month when a visitor in red comes knocking. I mean menstruation. <laughs> and a, the lowest part you get is about 315 naira. So how do you expect that family to prioritize pads when their income for that day is 360 naira? Up to one third of Nigerian women report that have been that they have been subjected to some form of violence, and one in five women have experienced physical violence. That's to tell you how bad this is. Gender-based violence in Nigeria is is a growing problem, especially in the northeast Nigeria. There are increasing cases of domestic violence, sexual exploitation, child marriage, rape of minors, that's kids below 18. Recent, recent research studied by students of Jesus Gariki. If you are here, please raise your hands. Jesus Gariki. Yeah, that Gariki. Who, are, who participated in the Tech Girls Advocacy Program by Girls Voices found out that 258 girls interviewed all have experienced gender based violence. And even the teachers and some adults does not even know the depth of gender based violence. Don't you think this is a cause for alarm? And funny enough, there are right, there are laws put in place to prevent this from happening. But personally, I don't see anything being done. There's a child right of 2003 that says that it is an offense of rape to have sexual intercourse with a girl child and is punishable with imprisonment for life. It even went further to say that it does not matter if the offender knew the girl was below 18 or even if the girl gave her consent. The right also states that a person does not have a right to take away a girl from her parents or guardian. And anyone who does this is liable to imprisonment for seven years. So imagine if these laws are put in place and there are public figures that, that we, we know that this, this, this right held. Do you think this kind of thing will keep happening in Nigeria? Do you really think this kind of thing will keep happening in Nigeria? Where public examples are made of people that violate this right. Seven years imprisonment is not easy. It's not a small thing. There are also rights. I'm coming. And the last one says, a girl must not be used as a service or commodity that can be bought, sold, hired, or disposed of. A girl must not be engaged in prostitution, slavery, sexual labor, and other unlawful acts that prevent her from attending school. And offenders are liable to 10 years imprisonment. How would is that? 10 good years. This crime and many more continue to happen in our society every day. Yet we don't see offenders being punished under the law. We need the child rights out to work, please.